Hey there, it's Rachel from All About The House. If we haven't met before, I am a massive planner addict. I'm totally addicted to making printables. Um, I'm a graphic designer with an Etsy shop. So apart from making planner printables, I also really like to make labels. So um, this tutorial is going to be added to my e-course, which is how to make labels in Photoshop. A whole bunch of tutorials in there if you want to learn how to make them. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make some content labels. So first, we'll need to open up Photoshop. So open up Photoshop and then go to File, New, and then choose your page size. So I live in Australia. We use A4 paper, which is known as international paper in Photoshop. Um, if you live in the USA, you would go with US size paper. I just leave the background as white and all these other default settings just as whatever um, Photoshop's defaults are, and then hit OK. So what I tend to do if I'm going to make a label is do a sketch on a piece of paper, like get, a, get out a ruler and draw what I want it to be and then cut it out and then place it over where I want to stick it to, whether it be like a box, um, a storage container, uh, a draw label, anything like that. And then I know what size it should be without having to like print it out and then do a whole bunch of test prints, wasting a lot of ink, etc. It's just easy if you sketch it out on paper first. So for this one, I'm going to go with two by three inches and I'm going to make some contents labels, which will be a really good size for Tupperware containers. You can obviously tweak the size to whatever you need. You'll basically just be doing the same thing, just with a different size. So you can do it with any size label. So I'm going to create a new layer, come over to the shape tool, right click. And so if you haven't got rectangle showing here, if you've got one of these other ones selected, you'll want to choose rectangle. You can do like circles, which is the ellipse tool or rounded rectangles, but if you're going to be printing and cutting these out by hand, so if you don't have a silhouette machine, which I'm going to assume you don't since you're watching this video, um, then you would go with rectangle because it's easiest to cut out. So then you want to left click and draw your rectangle, or just before we do that, I'll just change the fill color to black so we can see what we're doing, and I'll just turn off the stroke, which is a border around your shape. I just want it to be a solid color. Okay, so left click, and then you can enter in your dimensions. So I'm going to make mine three inches by two inches and then hit OK. So that'll create a rectangle for you. If you did want to experiment, you didn't want to sketch it on paper, you don't really care, you're not too like fussed about it being exactly specific measurements, then you can just left click and drag to make your rectangle that way. Okay, so there's so many different ways that you can make labels. There's literally like endless combinations, um, so many different colors, styles, patterns that you can use. For this one, we'll keep it really simple. So I'm going to make the border of this one, so I'm going to add a border, and I'm going to choose a color. So there's so many different colors in Photoshop's colors menu, there's so many pretty colors to choose from. You can also use the color picker tool as well to play around until you find a color that you like. And if you know the um, exact like shade of color that you want to use, if you want to do like brand colors or anything like that, you can just type in the code here in the RGB section or the six digit hex code. I do have another video on how to use the color tools in Photoshop. There's a few um, other like tricks and stuff, so I'll include a link below this video if you're interested in that one. But for this, I'm going to go with uh, blue. That's a pretty blue. So the stroke is the thickness around the rectangle. So obviously, the thicker the width, then the fatter your border is going to be. So I'm going to bump this one up quite big to about six points. Now, because we've got a white background and because you're going to be printing on white paper, I'm assuming, because obviously it's the cheapest and readily available, you're going to want to choose to have a colored border because then it's easier to cut out. If you have a white border, it's going to be a bit annoying to cut. But if you've got blue, it's really easy to see where the label ends. Um, so you, then you can get that perfect size again. I'm going to make the fill white because now I can see what I'm working with with that border. Okay, so I'm just going to move this up to the top corner of my page because then once I've done one design, I can copy it and fill the whole page with those labels. Or you can do a whole bunch of different size labels if you want to. Just keep in mind that you leave enough margin on all sides of your piece of paper. Most printers um, don't like it if you go any closer than half an inch to the edge of the page. And you can tell how close it is by turning on your rulers, which is these ones here. So if you press Ctrl and R on your keyboard, you'll be able to turn them off and on. So um, you don't want to go too close or things might get cut off, especially if your printer is not capable of doing borderless printing. All right, so we've got the outline for our label. Let's add some text. So I'm going to make these really simple contents labels, which will be good for putting on um, like storage containers for things that are going in the freezer so I know when I store, um, put them in there and what um, is actually in there. You could also do it for like craft supplies or things like Christmas decorations are really good for contents labels and any box that's not see-through so you'd have to open it to know what's inside unless you put a label on it. So to add some text you need to come over to the text tool, right click and always make sure that it's on horizontal unless of course you want to do some vertical labels but I always go with horizontal. 
and then you want to left click. It's very important that you don't left click over the top of your shape because it's going to be a bit funky. Like if you click there, um, see how it's like off the edge. You don't want that. We want to just get rid of that. And we want to start typing away from our rectangle, like underneath the bottom or the side, wherever you want to put it. So I'm just going to type contents and I'm going to do a whole bunch of pretty colored labels. So I'm going to make this one blue and then I can duplicate it and make like a pink one and do lots of pretty rainbow colors because I'm obsessed with rainbow colors. Um, if you follow my blog, you'll probably be aware of that. So if you press control A on your keyboard, then you can click up here and then click on your border so that it will get a perfect color match. So you don't have to sit there trying to manually match it, which would take forever. You can just use the eyedropper tool and get an exact color match. Okay, so we've got our contents text. I'm gonna click on the move tool, left click and move it up to where I want it on the label. So I always like to add a little bit of space um, between the top of the text and the edge of the border because if you put it like there, it just looks really like crammed and I don't know, it just looks nicer if you just bring it down a little bit. That's just my opinion anyway. You can put it wherever you want. So if you click on your contents text layer, then press control and click on your rectangle. You can then click this button here and it will align it automatically to the center of that shape or you could um, like eyeball it and decide that you want your text to be on the right so you can place it wherever you want. So you could just leave it like this nice and simple and then write on it, but I don't know about you, but I have really messy writing and I tend to write crooked unless I have lines. So let's add some lines to our label. So if you create a new layer, you can come back over to the shape tool. We've still got the rectangle tool selected. And this time we want our fill color to be that blue that we use because I want it to be matching. You could do light gray if you wanted to, or you could do black, you could do blue, whatever color you want to do. You could do multicolors, you could have a blue border, and then you could have pink text and pink lines. So there's so many different variations of just one simple label style that you can do. It's literally like endless. And I'm going to turn off the stroke, which is a border, because I just want a solid line. And then you can just left click and drag, um, and then until you're happy with the length of it and the thickness of the line. So that looks pretty good to me. I'm just going to move it down a little bit because obviously I need some space to write. So if I write here, then I've still got a bit of room. Okay, so I'm going to create a couple of copies of these to fill out the rest of the label. So I've got that rectangle selected. Press Control J on your keyboard to make a, two copies. I pressed it twice. So now I have three lines. Press Control T with that last layer selected and then hold down shift on your keyboard and then left click and drag your mouse down. So you don't want to place your line too close to the bottom of the label because if you type uh, or write a Y for example, you'll have text coming underneath the line. So you want to give a little bit of wiggle room for letters like that. Press enter when you're happy with where you've placed it. Then with that last uh, line layer selected, hold down shift and then left click so you've got all three of them selected and then press this button here and it will automatically distribute them evenly for you. So at the moment we've got a larger gap here than we do on the right side, so we want to center it. So click on those layers, hold down control, and then click on your rectangle, and then press this button here. So now your lines are in the center of the label and everything's looking pretty good. At this point, you could mix it up a bit. You could decide, actually, I want like a cursive font for my contents. I want to change the font style. I don't want all uppercase text. You could um, muck around with it until you're happy with how it looks. If you're going to be um, putting these on like containers where your contents are not going to change, it's going to be like pretty much the same. So maybe pantry labels where you're going to have always have like your packaged foods in this one. You could just type literally packaged foods rather than contents and leaving lines to handwrite it because I mean you're going to have to print it out anyway. You can just put what text that you want on it if you know for sure what it's going to be. But because I'm going to be using these for freezer labels where it can vary and where the date can vary. That's why I'm leaving these lines here. So when I go to use these, I'll put like um, what the meal was and then the date it was frozen. And then I might also put, you know, if I included veggies in the um, storage container or not, because sometimes I'll just put like the meat in and then I'll know, okay, I don't need to, you know, defrost that or whatever the go is. You could also put the grams or the, the um, serving size. So you could put like this is two servings or it's only one serving, etc. So that's a couple ideas of how you can use it. So we've done one label. I'll show you how to duplicate it quickly. Um, so if you want to go and create a whole bunch more of these. So we've got our first contents label. The first thing you want to do is save all of these or do a backup so that you have a template. So if you decide you want to come back later on and you want to make multiple copies that you'll always have that original one here. Sometimes when you print things out on screen, you might think, yep, that text is big enough. But when you print it out, you might go, actually, I want that text to be a little bit bigger. It's smaller than I thought it would be once it was printed out. 
So if you keep a template, then you can come back, do the quick tweak. You don't have to recreate the whole thing from scratch. So I'm going to create a new fold down the bottom here. And I'm going to move that so it's at the top of all of these layers. Double left click on the text and I'm just going to call it template. Then left click on your top layer, hold down shift, left click on your bottom layer, left click and drag and then drop it on your template text and it'll move everything into that folder. So if you hit that down arrow now, you've still got all of those layers, but they're hidden. So when you've got a lot of layers in your layers menu, it's a great way to like clean it up and keep it out of the way. So you've still got all of that stuff there. It hasn't been deleted, but it's not taking up lots of room. And if you wanted to turn that layer off and on, you just hit the little eye icon. Okay, so we've got our first one selected, our first um, label. If you press Control J, you can make a copy. At this point, you can move everything out of the folder or you could keep it and you could have like label one, label two, etc. Um, I'll leave that up to you however you want to arrange it. So I've highlighted all of these. I'm just going to left click and drag to move them out of that, whoops, out of that template folder. I'll move it up above, might be easier. Let's add a new layer. No, it does not want to work for me. Come on, let me out of the folder. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. Just being touchy. All right, so now we can move these ones. So if we highlight all of them, left click and drag it across. You can leave it in the folder if you want, but I find it's really annoying when you start bringing in like patterns and stuff like that. It just gets really irritating if you leave it in a folder. So I really tend to only put template in a folder and then I create my label put it into a folder and then like I keep my working files out of a folder and then when I'm finished with it then I put them in it if that makes sense. Okay so now we've got our second one let's tweak the colors. So what I'm going to do is click on my rectangle layer here and then come back to the shape tool and change the stroke. So let's say that I wanted to do a purple label. Find the color that you want, click on the little color swatch and then you can change your text. So we've got uh, text layer selected, come over to the characters menu. If you don't have this, this here in your menu, you go to window and make sure character is ticked and then it'll appear over here. If you left click there where it's currently blue and you want that one to be purple and then with the lines you can left click and then hold down shift to highlight all of them so you can change the color of them all at once so you don't have to sit there and manually do it. You can do them um, all in one go. They're looking pretty cute, um, some nice colours, I love blue and purple, they're such a nice colour combination, so you could mix it up and you could have a purple border with blue text or however, um, whatever colour combinations you want to do. So you can go ahead and fill out the whole page by creating more copies and then print them out and cut them out. As for what label paper, I do like to use glossy, it just really makes the colours pop and stand out and makes it look really pretty. Some pens do not like to write on glossy, particularly like fine tip ones. Your everyday like ballpoint pens that you can get like 10 for like a buck or two that are really cheap. Actually, I've found work um, or write better on glossy paper than those other ones. So if you really want to, um, like you're really concerned with making sure the colors look really good, then go with glossy. Otherwise, you would go with matte and then you can pretty much write with any pen on them. Um, otherwise, you can also resort to your normal uh, plain uh, paper like from your office supply store, your printer paper. And if you wanted to make them extra durable, you can use some contact paper like that clear um, book cover stuff that you use for your kids' notebooks, for your kids' school books, or you could also laminate and then use like some blue tack to stick it to the container or a peg or um, punch a hole in it with a hole punch and thread through some ribbon. So there's a couple of different ways that you can use these labels and you can also just use like washi tape or sticky tape as well, glue. Um, it's literally endless all the different types of ways you can organize with labels So I hope you found this tutorial helpful and if you are interested in more tutorials on how to make your own labels I'll include a link below um, for my e-course if you are interested There are heaps more tutorials on how to make basically any type of label like address labels um, More organizing labels personalized name labels monogram labels It's just so many different types of labels that you can make so I'll include that link below and if you want more tutorials like this don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my blog which is allaboutthehouseprintablesblog.com. Thanks for watching!